Alright, welcome back everybody to some more Arcanium. Before we start today, I have been uh, reading up on the corruption meter here a bit. And in, an, in the first episode that I did, I only read the high tier enemies section box here on the, on the, in the middle. And I kind of disregarded the little extra box on the right. Just I, I think that's like a UI thing, like my mind just thought that there was like a, a subsection that not, not really important. But actually it says something really important over here that we should read. So it says the horde and upgrades. The super elites are protected by a horde of guards. The, the super elites are the mini bosses. Why they give their life essence to the shard to help overcharge it. If you can he reach the shard before the cataclysm. Uh, a cataclysm is when we fill the, the corruption meter with two, to ten. So if we can reach it before the Cataclysm, you can use their essence to upgrade one card per unused corruption on the meter. So this is a, a, a connect that I hadn't made before. The, the quicker we get to the Super Elite, the more upgrades we get for free when we get to the Super Elite. Really, really important because that means basically every time I do a boss, no, no a normal fight, I get, I get a card or an upgrade or something like that. But we can also get that by just getting to the Super Elite. So that seems more... That's the, the it makes more sense to go directly for the super elite fight, but beware, each unused corruption on the super elite uh, on the on the on the meter will also add one extra guard to the battle before the summoning the super elite. So the earlier we get to the super elite, the harder it's going to be, but the harder the or the bigger the rewards are going to be. Kind of interesting mechanic, and I think that that makes a, a the mechanic a whole lot more interesting in my mind anyway. That also means that we should go for the fight right now. There are some caveats and, and ifs and buts, like we probably could still do some events or uh, elite elite fights uh, have some significant rewards that I think are worth more than getting one extra upgrade on, uh, uh, upgrade on the super elite card. So that's another thing. Now I don't have easy access to an elite fight right now. I still believe that if, even if I walked all the way over to this event here, it wouldn't cause any new corruption. It it sort of makes the area flash a little bit every once in a while. Not sure what that means. So it's still at 7 if I do the event, which I am going to do just to test it out here. There's a small clearing amongst mostly green vegetation. You notice a black and twisted sprout growing out of the ground. The corruption has affected the ground around the sprout too, causing it to bubble like tar. Stomp the sprout and put an end to its misery, gaining a random curse, but lose two corruption on the meter here, I suppose. Or leave the sprout alone and gather its nectar, gaining one random item, but gaining one corruption. Now we will... Gain a random curse. Also interesting to see what that is. But losing two corruption meaning then that the meter goes down and that makes us get more upgrades in the super elite fight. So like that and we got a curse. All villains start the next battle with extra maximum health. Last X battles. Three battles. Okay that was pretty rough. But that's fine. Oh what's happening? Nothing. Oh time did pass. Huh. I think time passed when I stepped onto the event tile then. Every three steps the day shifts to night and back again. But that is not entirely true. Yeah. Time doesn't pass when I just walk back and forth in already explored tiles. Okay. Just testing things out. Anyway, I say... Let's do Sorgoth the Fetid. Who? This is a new a su new super lead. So I will read the little flavor text here, and it says, "As you approach, dozens of hooded figures look forward with glassy eyes as Sorgoth the Fetid gives orders that they all seem all too intent on complying with. None of them are likely to fight you, so it's unlikely they'll pose a problem in the coming battle." But disrupting this scene is going to lead to a fight one Anador can scarcely stand to lose. Interesting. Dozens of hooded figures. Hmm. And then 
unrelated to that, it seems. We can bet 100 gold with a traitor that you'll win the fight. Gain one artifact, lose 100 gold. Sure. Uh, before I click... Items... The item notifications I've noticed are completely wacky. <laughs> they can... They just keep... Keep notifying me even though we have checked them. Oh. Alright, I'm sorry if there's like a short jump in the video here, although I may be able to edit that out. Apparently, there is some construction work in my uh, apartment complex and I thought someone was knocking at my door. Although that's not the case. I was just checking my decks here just to see, I guess... Oh, because the enemy info here, yeah. He's got nature resistance 6. That's pretty significant. A fetid spawn block. Void effluvium. Oh, maybe we did for face this guy before. Hmm. Definitely remember this ability. Applies two hex upon being hit. What? Two hexes. Hex is like poison, but magical. So every time we hit him, he does damage back and two of him. Over time, this is this is three damage as a base, two then one. But if you stack it, then more, and that's pretty significant. Huh. Essence strain, motor strike, deal of damage, and less life steal. This guy is going to be tough. I wonder then. Will all villains start the next battle with plus twenty-five? The first time I read this one, I was thinking that that's going to be for the first three enemies that are on the board as when we start the fight. But if that's for every enemy in the fight, also though the, those are spawned later, then we might have a problem. Uh, we can tell that like he has 180 right now. We'll see if he has 25% more than that when he shows his face on the board. We will bet 100 gold, of course. So... Now knowing that he has nature resistance five, could like or six, we could take a toxic arrow out maybe and add a sniper shot for one thing. I think that is a better idea for you. Other than that, well, no, she also has a bonus to green damage. The toxic arrow isn't super good though. That's part of the reason why. It's, it's, she cannot modify the amount of poison that this thing does with her nat uh, nature boost. So this is how we are going to do it. Battle, battle Sorkorth the Fetid. Oh, no, no. Better 100 gold. Yes. A merchant steps toward you. His eyes begin to glaze over, but less than the others. He offers you an object of power of your choice for a flat sum of gold. Continue. Okay. If you can make it through my guards, I'll turn and obliterate you. Well, I'm a natural. <laughs> Fun. Okay. And they have nature... Oh, this is... I thought for a second that this was him. But no, it's just like the same sprite, except he's a little bit more purple here. Look at that. The arachnoid abomination. And them having extra HP is going to be pretty rough. We'll see how it goes. So not a lot of damage being done. They're summoning two units up here, though. Landslide, multi strike three, deal two damage in line, but she reduces some incoming damage, so it's only three. Oh, this is multi strike three. So here, bramble skin is pretty good. Two backlash per card in hand. Oh, that's gonna be a lot of damage. Maybe I was gonna move, remove this one, but honestly, this is really powerful. 12 damage. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, over here, we should definitely do quick draw. We can say area shot. Your next arrow will shoot twice. This one has nature resistance. This one does not. So I think we focus him down. We might even be able to kill him this turn. Then the next arrow will shoot twice. Shooting here. Oh yeah. That's a lot of damage. And camouflage. 
This one I put in the deck because it's going to be great when we upgrade it, but right now I'm not a huge fan of it. I will get rid of it like so. Fireball over here would kill him before he can even summon anything, and that seems like a nice idea. She's also taking no damage now? Why? Interesting. Resilience minor buff. Reduce all incoming damage by one. Oh, he has something with that. And he apply one resilience whenever you cast an, uh, on an ally. Aha! So that added one resilience to her, and I think that reduces one damage per attack from this guy because he's doing multi-strike. That's really interesting that I didn't know. I thought resilience would do reduce the all incoming damage by from the for the first instance of attack and then go away, but it seems to be like for every instance of incoming damage that turn, which is a huge difference. I would like to sub this summon, why not, if we can. Perfect. And I think we burn the ignites, no pun intended, just to use the draws. We can do cleansing touch, just to get rid of it. And it gives her one resilience, which is a nice, nice test as well to do. And we'll keep the spirit cocoon. Um, for the familiars, do we summon those? Oh, we have a new potion over here instead of the other unit I didn't know um, that may not be a bad thing but it's not intended I'm not sure why the pacifying potion has been put in here do we do the astral familiar then the question and I think I should let's uh, hold on what what unit do we have coming out here affected spawn and it has six six and this is a five five so I don't want my five five to face a six six let's put it over here and there's a damage in a line, so I just killed my new unit. God damn it. We can't defend it. No, we can't use this on it. Well, I just killed my <laughs> my new unit. Because I didn't think that through. Silly. Yeah. All right. Victorious shot. We need to go to four combat points. That would be great if we could. We, of, of course, we're doing extra arrows, but we can because there's no arrows in hand. Choose an arrow card in your hand. Yeah. Dang it. We can sow. Firefly, Spirit Cocoon. Motor Strike 4 in a line. And here we have Ghastly Bile. It's 14 damage and a 3 Dispel. Okay. Dispel is interesting. All right, this is a pretty unfortunate turn in general here. Um, this guy is doing cleanse in a splash, so these two will be removing some minor debuffs. Two, two instances of two stacks of a minor or minor debuffs on the target that includes the scourge that she will be doing, and she can't she can't like do it over here. Uh, the modern shield is useless right here. The extra arrows. Can we? Oh, this one adds one extra CP. So let me try something here. I want to try here extra CP three, and then we'll do the sniper shot. That still doesn't work. Okay. I thought maybe it was only nature damage for her that didn't add uh, extra CP, but no. But here we go to four, and then the vicious shot will then. This does not count as an arrow right now. We can't extra arrows on it. But here we go. Oh, and the dispel, <laughs> the dispel from here will remove minor buffs. This is a major buff. Yes. Okay. So we do keep, get to keep the power from from this, despite um, the ghastly bile. She can do arrow extra arrows on herself because why not? And it still gives her two defense for the turn. We're still taking eighteen damage here. Huh. Oh, and I could have killed the fetid spawn, but now I can't. Oh my god, 
background. There's so much noise going on in the background. I'm, I hope you guys can't hear it. We'll, we'll do this, um, giving her some extra defense cards in the deck and also adding resilience and uh, another two defense for her right now. Uh, the Spirit Cocoon, though, has to go on himself here, I believe, because that's worth a little bit more. If she had shot the Fetid Spawn, she would have been good, but now she can't. And the question over here is, do we use the Molten Shield? I don't think we will do it this turn. Is that what we are going to do this turn, or do we do more? I could apply Weak to this guy. Void Effluvium as well for this guy, okay. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's okay. He's gonna get stronger and stronger every turn. And that will count for a lot right now because of the Wrath of Umbra. We do have to get kills on these guys that stick around eventually. But now she has more power, so hopefully we can get some work done next turn and turn for now. Oh, and the weak. I guess the weak will go away, right? Yes, it did. Okay. Quick draw, of course. Now they're pouring all the damage onto Angorn here. Battering Ram and Ghastly Bile. I wonder if the Battering Ram, since this guy does go before the third one in the row, and this one applies Vulnerable, I wonder if that combos. Uh, it's not applied in the calculation here, but the Battering Ram should apply to Vulnerable, which means this one will, or he will take double 50% uh, extra damage from the Ghastly Bile, I think. Uh, of course, modified by his nature resistance after the fact. So there's some work to be done here in defending against that. The Wrath of Umbra keeps stacking. All stacks are lost upon being destroyed, of course, yeah, okay. Landslide and the Ghastly Bile with Dispel here. We nearly need to kill the Fitted Spawn. Uh, oh, we can apply weak here, okay, but you cannot apply CP uh, at all. Kinetic Plast, though, can spread CP, okay, and she can do Molten Shield on herself to draw cards, which is great. Here's a Flame Pillar, that's nice. And, oh, this one costs two, okay. I think there's a combo here. If we Kinetic Blast here, that's going to make this one have two CP only. Yeah, that's not enough. Uh, there must maybe some CPs we will get in the ultimates. Hmm. Not right now. Terra can do a, a lot of damage, but this guy has nature resistance, which is why I'm hesitating. Oh, and she would have to shoot this guy first, also. He can he can do it, and I think that's better because the Cyclone will not be applied to anyone. We cannot do th 3 CP anywhere since these two have to build it, unless we combo it with a, a, an ultimate, but I don't really want to spend it on that. So we are going to Cyclone this guy, because she can do more damage here. This one says 44, but minus 18. So 44 is insane. It's, it's 44 unmodified over here. Could we kill him this turn? Probably. Hex, minor D4. Oh, right, so he, she takes damage, the return damage here. Okay. She's not taking any damage right now. He is... Almost guaranteed I'll be using the Thorny Shield here. That leaves us at 11. Okay. Rejuvenate would give him another Resilience. I'm wondering if we could kill one of these guys. We could definitely kill him. That's what we probably should, right? That. Then this. And then Kinetic Blast will be carried over to the next turn. We are gonna blast away at this guy now. 
I know he takes less damage from it, but he still takes damage from it, so I will let, leave it. Uh, and the Heartseeker arrow here, I'm gonna keep. So we have an arrow in hand, because in the draw pile we can tell we have the multi shot and some sproutlings, and they keep, give draw one, so that's fine. Oh, so no matter what, we will be able to have two arrows with the multi shot next turn. Hold on, we will use the Heartseeker arrow then here. Good. He's dying before he's attacking, so we are gonna take... I think we're gonna take, like, no damage at all. No, that takes away 8, but it also means we don't get the vulnerable, at least. Uh, rejuvenate. I will give that to Terra, right, because she, she's actually been damaged. I think that's wiser. What's the debuff here? Hex. Oh, yeah, she's gonna take damage over time as well. So do it like that. Fury meter is ready we could pyroblast someone but we could also do it next turn where i think it's going to be a little bit more useful so for now in the turn he wasn't dead yet why is he not dead yet huh i miscalculated so angon is dying fun uh he's also vulnerable i didn't see whether or not the vulnerable then comboed with with that guy over here i feel like it did otherwise he wouldn't have taken this much damage right he is a he was a 35 maximum health before come back here 35 maximum health it told me that he was taking 11 damage but it would have put him at 24 but he's down to 18 so i think the vulnerable did indeed combo with the next unit in line makes sense Oh, we can power rift now here. Killing that. It, it's already dead, so it's kind of useless. But to get the upgraded fireball, it's probably worth it. So let's try it out anyway. Now she has one power. How much damage does it do then? 30. Okay. Hmm. Tough to tell if that was worth it. We are going to see a whole lot of shield on Terra this turn. Which is useless, but if I don't do it, she can do nothing else. Hmm. Yeah, I want to maximize her damage, so this is just unfortunate. But there we go. Can we kill this guy this turn? Yes. He dies from... Burn and poison together. This time it should work. Yeah. Rejuvenate on Angorn. He might also want the Chrysalis then. Gaining a uh, shield next turn. The Fury Meter is at full. Could use it to hit the Earth Shaman here. Why wouldn't we when we have built up so much of it? It has to be the Pyroblast and it's fine. No burst. That's why he doesn't get extra de defense and he keeps taking the damage. Uh, I will do Chrysalis here. File uh, Flies we are keeping. We could have done the regen with the with Angon's ultimate, but I, even though he's missing some health, I don't think that would have been worth it compared to doing some damage over here. We need to kill seven. We've killed three. Six damage coming in on Terra, and a spiraling being spawned here. Another landslide over here. They're doing the same. We would like to finish off this guy, and we absolutely can. We're keeping the Vine Lash this turn, so we can kill the Spiderling next turn. Rejuvenate should go on Angorn. Quick draw here. Toxic arrow, one for each of these guys. Then this guy has... Terror of being unlucky and getting nature resistance enemies all the time. Um, 
That is unfortunate. I will kill you. This is a light hit and not a nature hit. So let's just use that on this guy then. Art Seeker arrow here. We should use Ignite, even though... Because it just helps cycle the deck and she just... It's free, so why wouldn't we? Soothing Rain, Bullseye... Or maybe a... Yeah, Bullseye up here, maybe? It's uh, red damage, that's very nice. We don't have to spend it. And so I will wait. She's hexed. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Am I overlooking anything? I don't think so. Let's go. So the first of all, we are doing the Vine Lash for sure. Aurora is the only one being attacked. He is buffing and shielding and another summon is happening over here. Okay. Flame Pillar. Always a no-brainer. That makes Ignite good. The 8 damage here comes with 3 Leech. Not a massive deal. But we might be able to kill him this turn. This is, what, only 8? Huh. One extra damage per burn on the target, yeah. But it's free, so it's still good. Toxic arrow, toxic arrow. Meter, hmm. Fireflies. Why, why is Terra at full health right now? I thought she was taking damage. Hmm. And she didn't have any regen on her, as far as I'm aware. Sometimes I miss some things that I'm... That I... A little bit confused by it, I have to admit. Rejuvenate on yourself. Toxic arrow here. Toxic arrow there. Save the heart seeker, I guess. And we could probably Kill this guy. No. Gotta spend that AP. Hit this one over there. Oh, we have full fury again. Tempting to kill you, but we will take a little bit of damage on Aurora. I suppose it's fine. And then that makes Angon's... Uh, ultimate a little bit more attractive as well. What do we have here? Crashing root, piercing in a line, another spiderling, and a landslide here. Multi shot ready. That does red damage, so this is better on you. We've got the bramble skin for her. Good. Giving resilience and defense. Here we can defend herself against... Nope, because again, I forget this is piercing damage from the crashing roots, so that was a waste. Mm -hmm. The leech we can get rid of with the cleansing touch. And resilience will work against the crashing roots, that's nice. So that does make it take less damage, but why? Why eight less damage then? Here's another thing that we need to understand. It is... Oh, she also has resistance, I suppose, here. Nature resistance, that's good. Uh, it does not factor in the... No, hold on. 40% off of 80 is not four. And where does the resilience factor in? Huh, not sure. Okay. We could Thorny Shield over here, and we will, of course, since he has a lot of actions. That's gonna do a lot of return damage up here. Also hit him with this. Scorch. Light you on fire, and you on fire as well. 
make the world burn. Yeah, the shield does work against the burn here. We could ultimate someone, but it I don't think it's necessary. We'll leave it. Okay, we don't have an easy way of killing you. No line attacks anyway, and a quick draw here. Toxic arrow, toxic arrow, and heartseeker arrows. We could probably kill the spider. He's summoning and he's defending. 11 damage here now. Okay. Yeah, kill the spider, I say. We could do it with the ultimate in here, the bullseye. And that would be fun, some fury. Probably a good way to do it. Toxic arrow there and a heart seeker. That guy can also be killed with the bullseye, and that's better because it's red damage on him. Ultimate is ready again. The ignite will do seven damage here. I think it's just as well used then to kill the little spider. Spirit Cocoon could defend. We got poisoned here, right by the little spiderling. For cleanse. But the 12 shield we are going to save for another turn, surely. That's better. We can do Chrysalis on himself. He does have a little bit of regeneration. Cyclone will apply a week. It's so close to being a kill here. Or combined with the toxic arrow, it will be. And then we throw a greater fireball up here. Uh, the summon here. We are gonna let that happen. Right? Or do we create a fireball right now? Sure. Oh, we could stop the summon. But that would kill him, and I don't want to kill them all in one turn. I would, I would rather kill him next turn to deny him that action. Shadow Bark Trion, Shadow Bark Trion, and Shadow Bark Trion. We have a, a trio of Trions. Flame Pillar sounds good against trees. You would think that some of the creatures had weakness. We've never seen anything have weakness to anything. Uh, the Ignite is not going to kill the little tree on here. In fact, we don't seem to have a direct way of doing that. I'm not going to use the Pyro Burst on it. And this one has a range limitation. Hmm. We can defend against the 9 damage though, so maybe that's how we do it. The Molten Shield. This is a piercing damage attack. Wait, wait what? Oh, she's resisting both attacks. That's why she's only taking nine, despite the high amount of damage coming in. So it, this one's doing four minus two. So it, any de defense we add in here would only lower the number by two. Defending against Doombark, the Crushing Roots would still attack. But we would want to kill it if we could. Hmm. The thing is, the Ignite won't. That's Molten Shield. A Power Rift kills this one, gaining us the power. Uh, but that, of course, that didn't leave enough. Ah, but then the Pyro Burst is going to kill it. Yeah, I think... Oh, and that spawned the the boss, the Super Elite, immediately. Ah, right. Ah, I didn't, never really made that connection, but I can make him spawn wherever I want him to. By killing an enemy in a specific line and then knowing when he's going to come in. And indeed, uh, his health seems to have been buffed by 25%. Yes, up to 261. So <laughs> I'm regretting the curse now, if you were wondering.
Um, he's gonna. He's immune to the first attack coming in. So, I think we sow on Aurora now because she is gonna be attacked by him, and this is actually good because Terra has mostly green damage and he's nature's six resistant. She's only red damage here, so this is a good way of lining it up and she can kill other things. Everything has nature resistance though, so poor Terra. But such is life. Uh, Victoria shot, Toxic Arrow and Heartseeker. Maybe I can save the Victoria shot for a different turn. Because of course it isn't going to be activated this turn. This is useless, might as well attack over here with it. Or save it. Now I would rather draw another card with her. I think she's going to be at four actions. So Flame Pillar is one of... So Ignite is actually kind of fine next turn. Yeah, we'll save it. Give her Rejuvenation over here. Save the Spirit Cocoon. Lots of little minions being spawned. Spits on the ground. I've got plenty more where that came from. <laughs> Alright, that's nasty. Uh, this is not a piercing attack. This is and this is. So yeah, the, the piercing attacks from the enemies are pretty nasty because I usually always uh, focus or um, yeah, work with being immune or like the Blocking attacks is done by the player through defense, primarily, is what I'm trying to say. Sniper shot this one, so that we can flame pillar up here. Fireflies. Now, we need one more combo over here to get the Victoria shot, which I still think is worth it, even though she can't really reach the super elite. And the only way to get it is for her, Aurora, to attack here. No, we can attack sort of the fetid and spread the CP. Uh -huh. Good, now she has major buff power. Ignite here. This is a splash, no. Ah, they're just taking dam damage from other sources. <laughs> Spirit Cocoon here seems to be a no-brainer. Defending with her wouldn't help anyway. We can kill the Doombark. Minus three shield. She doesn't have shield. Oh, because she has this shield in here. Right. So killing the Doombark would... That would still reduce the damage by four, because then the crushing roots will be reduced by this thing here. This one does not count as a shield, so piercing shouldn't run through it, is, is what I'm thinking. I will go side. And that did work, yep. Good. Rejuvenate on anyone. Let's do it on you, of course, since you have Chrysalis. Toxic arrow, arrow on anyone? I think we leave it for now. Okay. Horrific Visions. What's that? Shuffle two horrified cards into the deck, and a horrified card is shackled nine piercing damage to yourself. Wow. That is pretty rough. Can't really do anything about it, and there's summoning Doom Barks again. And over here, look at all these sproutlings. Doing nothing. Ignite is nice. Let's draw another card. Another Ignite! And that doesn't spend action, so we have to keep drawing, and here's a Fireball. And it goes up here, of course, and so does the Ignites. Bramble Skin does nothing this turn. Thorny Shield, Cyclone can be used on him if we really wanted it to, and that would give him weak. One weak. Not a lot, eh? Since it, he's not attacking, it doesn't really do anything. 
if we could get one more fury, which we can, then we can stun him so that he doesn't do the horrific visions, and I think I would like that. Camouflage does nothing. Toxic arrow. A real shot. We are gonna toxic arrow here and then camouflage on her just to get rid of it. Here's the fury meter, pyro burst, hit the super elite. Angorn is saving his stuff. The thorny shield doesn't really help a lot. I think you will use it on yourself. Yes. Because the bramble or the backlash thing carries over to future turns, which is nice. And then that clears up for another door. Yes. Good. And turn. And they keep doing these piercing attacks and they grow in strength every turn. So this is pretty intense. We gotta kill those soon. Uh, the pyro... The power of here, that doesn't work because the scorches are not modified by power, so getting the power from the power rift is useless. Uh, then Toxic Arrow can be used on the Doom Bars, but it only does 5 damage and they have 6 health. Hmm. He has Backlash, so this Doom Bark will die. If we also poison it. That's one way of doing some work here. We can also arrow shot and double poison something. I guess that's nice. He's doing what? Multi-strike 4, deal 5 damage and life steal. So Bramble skin on her seems to be pretty useful here. She's gonna be scorching him. For sure, that's 12 burn now, that's really nice. Cleansing touch would get rid of the hex over here, so keep doing that. And then get rid of 12 hex from her. Gotta kill these doom barks, so multi shot. And Toxic Arrow, this guy here. Camouflage does nothing, but we need to get rid of it. Fireflies would probably kill this one since it dies from the backlash. Yes. Okay, we're making pro progress, but it is, uh, it is a, we're taking some damage. It's not easy, this one. Flame Pill is great, Kinetic Blast, Greater Fireball, Chrysalis, Wine Slash, Doombark being summoned here, so Wine Slash is being kept, Chrysalis and Rejuvenate, he's summoning a 9-9 over here, rough, and meanwhile Terra needs to start working on killing these two f fools here. We are flame pillaring up in the middle here, of course. Get burned to everyone. Uh, wine slash being kept. Rejuvenate should be used on Angorn, I believe. And then Chrysalis makes sense on him more than anyone. If we do Kinetic Blast. No, we'll do. Yeah, we'll do Kinetic Blast here. And then do the ultimate, since that also clears the hex from her. Soothing Rain. Getting everyone to heal a bit. It may have been better to Pyro Blast the big guy. I'm not sure. I do like regenerating on my guys. And it combos really well with the Chrysalis in here. Regenerate means he's gonna get a whole lot of defense next turn. In case they attack him. Heartseeker arrow here. We still have the Annihilation Potion, and I'm saving it for Sorgrath, but maybe also a Panic Kill on one of these if they get too powerful. We also have the Weak Potion to make one of those attacks lessened. Weakened, one might say. If 
15 defense on Angorn does not protect against the crashing roots up here, but he is resistant to some of it, so that's nice. Meanwhile, Terra is in big doo doo. And of course, the Wine Lash isn't enough to kill the Doom Bark. Molten Strike here is useful. She's now taking no damage, and we will fireball this one. Can't hit these guys behind because of the block. Ignite you. Good. Maybe we sow on... Well, the thing is, that it doesn't help to sow and defend against these Treons with their piercing attacks. It's super annoying. We can use potions on them. And it may be pertinent to reduce the 13 damage incoming here this turn. Just a little bit. This will kill him. This will kill you. So... On Terra. Assuming that she's gonna kill one of these soon. And then... These two are already dying, so it doesn't make sense to attack them. I'll just throw... And go on to attack on the Super Elite. Good. We have a uh, bullseye ready, but we're not using it. Should have maybe done that on the Doombark this turn. And then kill the guy behind. So we have it for next turn. All that defense wasted. And they're summoning. Good. Maybe we can kill one before they do... The, the ultimate bypasses their uh, resistance, so I'm definitely eyeing that as an option. Here. Horrified. Deal 9 piercing damage to self. Expend. Cannot really do anything other than playing it, can I? But he will do. he will die if I do it twice. So we really need to think about our choices here. If, if I could kill Sorted the Fetid before I have to play the Horrified, that would be better. Uh, but maybe I'm dreaming here. Fireball here is good. Ignite does, really doesn't do a whole lot, but it's free at least. And Cleansing Touch gets rid of the Hex. He's doing uh, lots of little multi-strikes. So give her the backlash. Terra. Toxic arrow here. Heartseeker arrow. And do we play the horrified? He, he has another horrified in deck. I can leave one, but I have to play one of them. And so that might as well be the first one of those. Seven damage taken. Oh, I think his resilience kicked in just before he took damage from it. That's really nice. Maybe, maybe not. We got another chain. Oh, it's not a Trion, at least, so we can... This, this one, doesn't, I don't think, does piercing damage, and that, that, at least that's nice. <laughs> but uh, it's another nature resistance foe, foe of course. Um, Sprawling here doesn't help. You can't play that on an ally right now. No. This is a piercing attack. We gotta stop this now, otherwise Angon dies. Oh, the flame pillar here will kill that guy. And power rift here could be good. Let me do the flame pillar here. That kills this shadow bark tree on. We don't have to spend anything here right now. And I'm thinking next turn with po Power Rift, Kinetic Blast, and maybe an upgraded a Greater Fireball here would be great. Great, get it? Uh, and of course she only has Scorches in deck, so that's impossible. But we can use the Power Rift with the Kinetic Blast next turn at least. That doesn't make sense. Because I'm talking about using the Power Rift on this one. 
and we're not going to let this one live. Or maybe we can let it live. Hold on. Uh, because we can do... He He's not being attacked by this much damage right now. He's only taking the three from the Doom Bark. And we could Spirit Cocoon against it. We could also Bullseye it, which is not a bad idea. Start of each turn gains two cleanse. Okay. Sniper shot is nice that it, it could shoot over here. Definitely tempted to do that. Poison here, sniper shot there. Keep the sproutling. Spirit cocoon. Uh, Firefly here first. Because that gives him the hex, and then Spirit Cocoon gets rid of that, and that's kind of nice. He's still dying. No, 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 he's not. Yeah, he's not, because this guy is going to die before he attacks. I really hope I'm right about that, otherwise it's going to suck. We could stun the Sor Sork of the Threaded, but right now he's taking what? Oh, one, two, three, four, five damage from the Backlash, carrying over from last turn. And for that reason, we are not going to stun him this turn. I will still leave the power rift to do a big combo next turn. End turn. Alright, let's see if I was right about doing this. So power rift just for the record, uh, Power Rift increases damage, and just to clear it, what fire once and for all, that does not include stuff like applying Scorch. Yeah, didn't think so. And then now we will do the Kinetic Blast here with the modified power and the ultimate as well. And that didn't quite do it. He's dying to the burning though, and the poison. So he is dead. Now we just need to... Oh, we can finish it off with the Flask of Blind Nation if we want to. Uh, do we want to? Because we could heal. No, we heal at the start of the turn, so we can't. Yeah, just kill him. End it. Rough fight, but we didn't lose any characters. Took a whole lot of damage, though. Continue... The ability, an explosive arrow, no, no, no. Another greater fireball, and another quick draw. God damn it. Is this ever bad? Oh yeah, if there's no arrows in the draw pile, then it's bad. But right now we could take out Camouflage, for example, for it, and that would still make it good. Explosive arrow is bad. Greater fort fireball. Unless we find other ways of getting power, this is just not good. But maybe if we can get it later, that would be really cool. So I'm gonna take it, the anticipation of maybe, just maybe, getting more. And I will end the episode here. I know we have a few more rewards to collect, but it's been a really long episode. I hope you all enjoyed Arcanium. See you tomorrow and.